Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with a mold making experimental video for the injection molding machine. Looking at our first test, home plastic injection molding with an epoxy mold found online by our tech kits on instructables.com. We'll be imitating this. I'm not too happy with this uh, method, though it's very quick and I can get a couple of castings immediately while I'm waiting for resources to gather. We're going to attempt it, but according to injectionmolder.net, where I got my machine, there is finally a high temperature resin on the market. If your uh, bits and pieces while casting is uh, warped, uh, bad news is you won't be able to straighten it out, but for this case, that is uh, going to be pretty ideal for replicating parts or getting something prototyped and multiplying it very cheaply and easily. This is something we may get our hands on at a later date and do a review test. But for now, we'll be using standard epoxy resin from uh, Barnes in Australia or any other two-part you can find in any hardware store, craft store, that sort of thing. Here is all of our equipment. We've got some molding, clay, lubricant, pot, resin, a sprue, part we wish to replicate, and two mold halves. The hole in the center makes it very interesting. I was going to make replicas without them, though for mold making, I think there's a huge advantage, and we'll see that. As a molding box, the edges are curved or filleted, as well as the inner edges. And you'll probably find that the walls, if you measured, would uh, taper by 3 degrees or uh, greater. This makes it very easily, if we're going to pour anything in there or mould anything in there, it's going to pop out the hole in the bottom. So we uh, greased it all up. A lot of the tutorials recommend you glue a sprue onto your part. I've got plenty of sprues, so cutting that out's not an issue whatsoever going to pin it so I can remove it later and there won't be any slag from the glue that will be picking up in the detail. If the sprue is too small I can just carve it to be bigger later in the resin so that's not a big deal at all. I've decided to lubricate the part with the heat lubricant that came in the box. Just spray it on, allow 10 minutes to dry. The idea of sticking it on the sprue with the pin is I could pivot it slightly to make sure that the right amount of resin is submerging where the parting line is. None of it gets uh, undercut or caught. That's absolutely uh, perfect in this course. Also a little bit of uh, putty shoved there to make sure that nothing leaks out of the sprue hole as it is a tad smaller than 9mm. Got the two part prepared. Going to pour it, mix it and set the mold. It's poured in and it's roughly on the same level as the flash mark around from originally when this got molded. will allow a while for this to set. Don't worry about the uh, black flakes. It was a contaminated uh, container and it got mixed in. It won't cause any issues. Within a few hours it has completely hardened and ready for the next layer. We're going to have to lubricate the resin bit as it will not become a solid block of resin though separatable in two halves. We've closed it up, made sure it's nice and tight and poured the second casting of resin right on top until it filled up, tapped it quite a bit to get any air bubbles up and poured the slightest amount in. Again a bit lumpy, we will have to see how it turns out on the other side, hoping there's no uh, gaps or issues. Okay, this isn't turning out as well as I hope so far. The part got destroyed due to a couple of undercuts that I couldn't quite control due to a level of the resin. I think uh, my next experiment will probably be far more successful than this. It's also rough as hell and I suspect there might be uh, bubbles and other issues. What I did for the deeper part is after I pried the parts out I've uh, run a knife around the edge to remove the undercut so instead of being round it's going to be more square a little bit of detail is going to be lost but we're going to do a few castings anyway just to see if it'll pop out or any other uh, 
trouble will occur. I'm going to uh, let it harden a bit more and do an ejection in a few hours time. If we get a successful one, we'll keep doing it until the mold wears out. And if it's uh, nasty, we'll uh, pretty much try a different method of uh, pouring resin in, taking advantage of the holes in the back and actually using molding. The idea is also to have these removable from the master blanks so we can put more fillers and inserts inside. If it's stuck and it won't come out, put something hard through the hole, heat up the mold with uh, some sort of hair dryer or heat gun and bash it out of there. Once it heats up the metal expands and it'll be a nice uh, fit to just pop out. When it's stuck together like this and it won't open or part, same thing, just heat it up. We've got the Model B100 injection bench top machine. The heat box is on, the mould is loaded, we're just about to compress a shot. Using up our test plastic LDPE, the mould has already been lubricated with the heat release agent provided. Man Easy Release 205 release agent. Getting close to temperature, we'll pretty much start putting in the pellets. So we're going to do a compression shot. And fill it up with a bit more plastic pellets. Enough time passed. We're going to do a full injection. Oh, that was tough. We'll open the mold in about two minutes. I've done some injecting. A smaller runner or gate is not a big deal. However, due to how the resin is not flush, it had really, really, really bad flash problems and the plastic just extruded all over the place. Now, mind you, polyethylene does have a very low density and it just slides through everything and it leaks all over the place. The styrene has a higher density and suffered less problems. But due to just how dodgy the mold was, the detail is just absolutely atrocious. So the experiment is a complete failure. I'll uh, throw them out, but that's not a big deal. I just wanted to test out that uh, how resin goes out. And I might do another resin test sometime in the future. Uh, more of a correct uh, molding form, a bigger, thicker piece. But I think uh, we'll try epoxy putty next. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, stay tuned for further content. And don't be worried, it's going to take a lot of goes until we get a really nice uh, f flowing part that's uh, of this quality out of a metal mould. And if we have to, we will stick to metal moulds and look for a way to manufacture them as cheap as humanly possible. Catch you guys later.